Hi, hi everyone. Um, welcome and thank you for being here. It's great to see uh, many people on this afternoon. Uh, so we're gathered here for a rather somber affair. Um, but although not all remembrance, you know, is sad because it might be a chance for us to work through the loss and this is the point of the event that we're having today in memory of Richard. Uh, we're here to remember Richard, who was a dear colleague, a friend uh, to some here, husband, a mentor, um, and a member of AUB faculty who served AUB in Lebanon from 1993 to 2016. Uh, Richard's biography is not a usual one by the measures of, let's say, a career academic today. It feels like that with his loss, we've we kind of lost the type of intellectual and humanist that may be harder and harder to come by these days and as time goes by. Uh, Richard was born in Darjeeling and died in Tyr already in that. <laughs> There's a lot that is uh, singular. Um, his life was punctuated by his intellectual commitments, if one just looks at his biography. Um, and I think these intellectual commitments for those who knew him were somewhat consistent and unwavering from Darjeeling to Cambridge to the Amazon to Jordan and then to Beirut. Uh, Richard was always very careful with generalities. He was meticulous about specificities and very curious about singularities. <laughs> and he was open to contingency, surprise, and chance. I mean, he went from mathematics to anthropology, for instance, a discipline that was dear to him because of its ability to allow for a critical reflection on mechanisms of power, governmentality, which was something that occupied Richard in his work. And I think as a student, I, I did take a course with him on Foucault's <laughs> account of governmentality, which was, of course, was uh, full of loads of papers and books and lots of details. It's not just an idea, it's not, <laughs> it's in the records. That's this, uh, the, the, the kind of the, the way he approached it. So he was committed to the discipline of anthropology, which was allowed for a critical reflection on mechanisms of power, governmentality, and knowledge production. Richard was allergic to conservatism, yet he was keenly committed to understanding the ways through which norms and laws came to be set in place. And as a son of one of the last Indian civil servants or colonial administrators, Richard spent his life doing perhaps the exact opposite documenting and historicizing the myriad forms of governance, colonial, imperial, and otherwise. He is now laid to rest in Tyr, overlooking from a hill his beloved Palestine, which as Martha um, will say, or probably will tell, I mean, this is perhaps a place that he in passing joked and said, this is a place to spend eternity. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, but perhaps fortunately, he did get a spot in the <laughs> cemetery. So I remember Richard as a teacher, as a colleague, and as a colleague, he had an acute sense of listening and just the right degree of skepticism that always pushed one to articulate better what they had to say. He was generous, he was considerate, he was level-headed, and he was a stickler for detail uh, with a wry sense of humor. So we gather here to remember him today, and we will hear short testimonials from his wife and lifelong partner and collaborator, Martha Mundy, from his colleagues and friends, uh, Maher Jarrar and Sonia Atassi, as well as two of his uh, former students, Mohanad Hariri and Samar Ghanem. So thanks for being here and listening to the, the event as it proceeds and what people will say. Okay. Um, Martha, you want to? Yeah, um, so oh, is it a blank? Yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> Liberally. Okay. Oh, I, I see Glenn Gould there, but anyway. Uh, yeah. I want to thank. Uh, Nadia in particular, and Tom, and the others for organizing this event to remember uh, Richard. In part of my remarks, I think I'll overlap a bit with Nadia, but not all of them. Uh, as you may know, Richard died from a traumatic head injury. And this prompts me, or prompted me, to reflect on what kind of a sociological intelligence was his. Richard was a fine editor, 
having been trained young in the craft of English prose. But his first discipline, as we've heard, was mathematics, from which he moved to sociology. I say sociology because in Delhi, uh, anthropology is sociology, and uh, I don't think, I, I, th I think he would embrace the wider term as well. In any spare moment throughout his life, he played number games. But for, for sociology, it wasn't statistics that he valued, but the extraction of pattern out of lists and sums, a modeling spatial intelligence that corresponded to his pleasure in mapping the relations of people, of people <coughs> to space and nature. Later today, I gather you to see a clip concerning the 1965 trip, which his friend Jonathan Ambash, Jonathan died in 1968 in Biafra, three years later after their trip, organized the Choco of Colombia. The two hitchhiked from New York City to Panama, took an aeroplane to Colombia with a hunting gun in the plane, by the way, and from the coast went up river with local boats. A documentary was later made concerning what they had done and left. Perhaps it's from this that you'll to see, you are to see a segment. But by then, conflict, in which of course the USA played its role, meant that the latter-day filmmakers were not permitted to go upriver to the Choco. Richard was ashamed of the characterization, characterization of their trip as an expedition, but fond of the music and images that the two had recorded. He had a musical culture. Richard had played the violin quite well, but stopped on going to India, where he came to understand, but not to play, classical Indian music. Thus it was not, as he put it, bows and arrows anthropology, in which his close friends Stephen and Christine Hugh-Jones were in fact to excel, that he would come to pursue, but as Nadia has implied, but, but through both love, love of a girlfriend, and of his professor Jeet Singh Uberoi, both of whom were Sikhs, or are Sikhs, are Sikhs still alive, and anger, he would strive to dissect the sociology of the Raj during the last years of which his father had served and into which he had been born, his birth certificate. Richard's 1971 Delhi University M. Lit analyzed the administrative categorical fixation of both caste and religion of persons, <coughs> according to localities, in the Punjab census. From that he, but from that he went on to the land records office of Lutyana, Punjab, for almost five years, on the understanding that the administration of agrarian tax settlement formed the backbone of rule and knowledge under the British Raj. His work entailed both a critique of the administrative systems of knowledge, as in the essay, Rule by Records, Rule by Reports, Complementary Aspects of the British Imperial Rule of Law, and Reconstruction of Rural Patterns of Life at the Onset of Such Registration, as in the first map I showed you. This office-based fieldwork also entailed an unpopular critique of the tendency of historians not to venture beyond the central archive. I should keep these remarks short, and so I won't go into work we subsequently did together on rural histories of greater Syria. Let me leave simply with what, so far as I understand it, a word on what AUB allowed and did not allow to Richard. Given the streaming of education in the United Kingdom, Richard welcomed studying great texts, not least the philosophical, that were the core of the old CS program. In a sense, teaching these <clears throat> allowed him to complete his own education. He had mathematics, sociology, and then uh, a fair dose of philosophy and, and literature. And so he did regret the reduction of the program a decade or more ago in what a colleague of mine at LSE used to term the sweetie trolley uh, approach to a curriculum. And lastly, many years earlier than the reduction of CS requirements, 
he deeply regretted the refusal of the SBS department, of the Social and Behavioral Studies department, as it was then, and it's so, but it is so am, so, so am today, to countenance having Jeet Singh Uberoi as visiting professor. A word about Richard's taskmaster and severe model. Jeet had moved from an M-lit restudy of Bronislaw Malinowski's work that was published as The Politics of the Cooler Ring in 1962, to refusing the role of native informant for Western anthropology by doing doctoral fieldwork in Afghanistan and not India, to a semiological critique of Western science and the academy in Science and Culture, 19, 1987, and The Other Mind of Europe, Goethe as Scientist in 1984, to a bitter understanding of the colonized histories of religion in, in a book, Religion, Civil Society in the State, a study in Sikhism, published in 1996. Close by the sea that he loved, Richard was buried in the Christian cemetery of Sur, but accompanied then and thereafter by myriad recitations of the Fatha by Muslim friends. And in Delhi, on learning of Richard's death, Jeet read the Ardas, the final Sikh prayer. And here is Jeet reading the final Sikh prayer. Thank you. Good afternoon. I've written this afternoon some thoughts. So I'm going to read them and then I'm going to distribute one of the lectures, a handout of one of brilliant lectures as used to be given by Richard. Now I'll talk about it in a minute. And I start directly by saying Richard was a dear colleague. I won't say a friend but a very dear colleague whom I miss a lot, and I think most of us at CBSP and this university miss a lot. Richard was genuinely warm individual, brave and compassionate, although it took me some time to understand his manner, his approach. Uh, he, at some points at the beginning, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it, uh, one thinks that, uh, uh, He's a little bit, perhaps, uh, uh, not very friendly, if I may put it this way. But then I discovered he's very honest and very passionate. When I joined CBSP in 1998, Richard had been already there since 1993. So I started then attending classes with my colleagues in order to recapture the spirit of CBSP. I say the spirit because I studied at this university, so I attended four CBSP courses. But as a student, now we need to understand what is exactly this program. So I started attending with uh, my colleagues then uh, uh, courses. Uh, to learn more about the sequence, as we called it, and observing both teachers and students. So I visited Richard's classes oftentimes. And I'm proud to regard myself as uh, uh, Richard, as my mentor. Richard clearly formulated the objectives and requirements of the course at the beginning, uh, beginning of the semester. He started off with an informative and inspiring humanistic, I would say, introduction, focusing on the meaning of civilization, and I'm coming to this in a minute, and uh, 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 the resonant role of the human being in making cultures. Richard approached teaching as a true partnership between teachers and students, between himself as teacher, very much involved and engaged, and students. He was permanently well prepared, enthusiastic, and his classes were disciplined, yet challenging, if I may put it this way. In fact, it took me some time to appreciate Richard's way 
of thinking towards different venues of our work together at CVSP and his particular approach to things. Richard was a genuinely honest and passionate person, as I discovered with time, who defended his ideas with consistency, especially when he is arguing a cause of general interest for CVSP or for the community at large, and especially for students, or when debating an intellectual matter or proposing an idea or a new model. With time, I learned to understand his temperament as that of someone who unpretentiously stood by what he believed was righteous and as a means of common good. At that point, I, I felt that I'm becoming very close to Richard, and he became really a dear colleague over time, with very much respect for him. One of my vivid memories of Richard as a candid and intellectual debater goes back to the academic year 1999-2000. Uh, uh, Martha just mentioned when CVSP was uh, being cut down to two courses and we had the long debate meetings. At that time, the department, the program, uh, 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 consisted of 30 members uh, from all across departments at AUB. We were undergoing a thorough revision, I will put it now, and uh, this should be at some point, by the way, uh, uh, someone should write about it, or more than one, uh, uh, who experienced uh, that uh, time. Uh, revision, I would say, restructuring process. In one of the long meetings with late Provost Heath, the issue of changing the name of the program arose, and the name Cultural studies was proposed. It took us two, three hours discussion. Uh, Richard was very vibrant, uh, uh, arguing against. I still recall Richard's astute intellectual arguments for keeping the term civilization and encountering the more idealistic German term Kultur. Now, this is a vexed debate in academia which has a long history. However, I'll stop at Richard. Richard's worldview was more anthropologically based, and he was trying to bring the discussion towards a global south approach, not only civilization, uh, uh, French, afterwards uh, British, and culture, uh, the more idealistic, as I said, German. He was trying to bring the whole thing to here, in Lebanon, where we where he teaches, where we teach, where CVSP is a very important uh, uh, program in the forming of the education, intellectual education, mental education of students. Uh, so this impressed me a lot. Uh, his approach, not only to the theoretical vexed uh, debate that we, most of us know about, huh? uh, uh, but the way Richard approached intellectually, astutely this thing. So. Uh, uh, his approach engendered a novel perspective to the whole issue, according to my understanding. Now, Richard was integral in the development, his role was integral in the development of the revised program, although he was against you know, cutting down, but we had to live with it. We had to cut from four down to two and restructure, rethink the whole thing. Now we are going down to, I don't know where, where are we heading to? Uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a bright future, and I see Nadia especially working on it. We're heading towards something new. Uh, we still have lots of the spirit of CVSP, not any more great books. Why great books? Okay? Books. Why canon? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, so, uh, respecting what Richard did, but going now towards new horizons, new perspectives. Uh, so, uh, Richard has contributed a lot, and I think positively, to modeling, to mo modeling and modernizing the CBSP program and the curriculum. Uh, although, as I said, he was all the time astutely, intellectually debating and defending his position. He was really able to shine in sharp interchanges, not only in discussing curricular and administrative issues relating to faculty and students' rights, for that matter, but mainly with his students when he shifts towards a compassionate attitude, never 
condescending and always perceptive. Yeah, I've seen Richard arguing intellectually very astutely huh, with colleagues, with intellectuals, with the administration. Uh, and I've seen him dealing with students uh, open-minded, openly, as uh, 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 Nadia mentioned, and she is a student. I still can see him now sitting on a chair in his office, the keyboard on his lap, and he briskly, I would say, configuring his research results as a basic DOS. He never used the word, uh, up to my knowledge. Huh? I would go inside, and he says this thing, and he's running on the thing, and I would ask him, Richard, where is the computer itself, Yanni? He would laugh, he would smile, his, you know, his, his bright smile with, with his teeth, and says, this is DOS. Uh, so, uh, uh, never using more or more, uh, uh, never using words or more elaborate versions, for that matter. To my mind, and I respect him as a very dear colleague, Richard might have been a bit difficult, to my understanding. But through his dignity, honesty, and grace, Richard endeared himself to many around this university, many students. I, and I truly miss his presence at CVSP. He helped build a sense of community at CVSP. Another vivid memory, which will never fade away, was the opportunity to enjoy each semester. I made it point each semester to attend Richard giving his very cunning lecture on the Odyssey, on Odysseus, weaving a design. And perhaps we can uh, uh, please take one and uh, carefully. By the way, I tried to find the video. We used to have the videos at CSP. Thanks to our clever secretary, we're using the videos. Uh, I lost at least my uh, 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 video on Marx. I was trying to find the Richards. It used to be uh, on Google as well. Huh? They just disappeared. Uh, it would have been lovely to hear, to hear Richard giving the lecture very passionately. Uh, and it was then I knew it was passion. So let me, I'm finishing. Uh, so I never missed this opportunity to enjoy each semester by attending his cunning, very cunning lecture on the Odyssey. This has always been a wonderful experience both on the intellectual level and the acoustic, hence the spiritual. Richard, in a sense, is shy. He's very honest, he's shy. When he gives his lecture, he's taken with the lecture and his voice betrays his passion. When he stops at Aletheia and Aletheia, and he makes it point and introduces these terms to the students, Richard would be taken totally by the Odyssey. Aletheia is the truth. It's uncovering, unveiling, but it came to be meant as truth. And Aletheia is wandering. And I think this is the life of uh, Richard. As Nadia have said, as uh, Martha have also mentioned, his own odyssey, from India to South Lebanon, via Europe, his nostrils, journey back to Tia. Journey back, I think, I would say, at the shore of the Mediterranean, and as everyone mentioned, and on the border witnessing for truth and justice, and that was really dear, I think, to Richard's heart. For me personally, it has been a joy and a privilege to have known Richard, to have been a colleague of Richard. This is particularly a difficult and painful time for Martha, and we all, I myself, extend uh, my heartfelt condolences, and, but Richard will still, I think, be, remain a dear member, a dear colleague of this university, especially of CVSP. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much, Nadia, for bringing us uh, together. 
Um, I would just like to uh, share a few memories uh, about Richard as a colleague, uh, a very dear colleague, a chair, my chairperson, so my boss, <laughs> also a mentor, a friend, and family in Beirut. So um, um, I uh, was part of the CVSP program as an assistant professor, and at the time, I think I was the only uh, female professorial rank in the program. Unfortunately, Nadia had not yet joined it. It was mainly, uh, sorry if I say it like this, a bunch of full male professors, <laughs> and then you had a lot of female instructors. <laughs> Fortunately now, uh, this has changed. So it was sometimes a bit difficult, um, but I had a lot of support actually, first with Maher as chair, and then uh, with Richard as chair. And um, he actually made it a point that we should all teach all CVSP core courses. So once we had taught them all, we would be able to choose, but first we had to kind of work ourselves through the core pro, uh, courses in order to really get to know the program. And I think this was very good training and um, maybe it allowed me, like him also, to educate, to teach myself. So this is something that Martha pointed out earlier. Um, he was someone who would give very good advice. So someone also you could confide in, confide in and you could trust. So um, I remember uh, asking him for advice uh, uh, actually uh, a number of times. As was pointed out, he had a very dry sense of humor, which would really make our lives so much uh, uh, more pleasant at AUB and in Beirut. Um, I remember when I went up um, for promotion from assistant to associate professor, um, he, I think, at, the, at that point was um, a chairperson of CVSP. And um, I had submitted, uh, my book was not yet out, but I had submitted the proofs. And he came back to me with a list of corrections. So he had really read every single word. And this is something rather rare, <laughs> right? So um, he was very, very, uh, 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 really paid a lot of attention to detail and uh, was very generous also uh, reading and giving feedback to in particular maybe junior colleagues and that was very, very helpful. Um, as I said earlier, he was also and became more and more a dear friend and family in Beirut. I remember organizing together with John Pedro Schwartz, who unfortunately uh, was not promoted to this day, I don't know why, <laughs> and consequently left AUB. Uh, I organized the CVS, uh, uh, CVSP uh, forum um, in the form of an international conference on collecting practices. And this was back in 2008, and I had invited Richard's brother, Charles Somares Smith, who at the time was um, the director of London's National Gallery. And I think it was the first time maybe that Charles was visiting Richard in Beirut. So um, it was also a very kind of nice brotherly coming together of the two. Uh, Richard, um, uh, John Pedro and I were to meet the day or two days after the conference and when I didn't show up for that meeting, Richard actually came to our house and ran into, in the street, ran into my husband and told him, I'm worried Sonia didn't show up. And then my husband told him, 
she's in hospital, she just gave birth. <laughs> so I had given birth a month uh, early. And Richard, apparently I only know this from what my husband um, told me. So he started crying and he came to see me at hospital. And for me, this was something at the time we didn't have family in Beirut. So it, it really meant uh, a lot to me. So he was uh, the first person really then um, uh, after my husband to visit me um, at a hospital. I also recall a number of invitations actually that Martha and Richard at your house at Manara, you would have friends, colleagues over. I also remember you and him coming over uh, to our house, a number of common friends. Uh, Richard kept in touch with me after I left CVSP. So I moved from CVSP out to the English department, not very far, just <laughs> another uh, building across uh, the Green Oval. So he would sometimes come over for a cup of tea and I um, uh, really, uh, looking back at these visits, um, uh, uh, these were very dear visits uh, for me. Um, I also recall visiting Martha and him in Seward together with Livia and our <laughs> spouses and kids. Um, and I remember that when we visited you, we actually sat by the restaurant at the sea where he is now next to the cemetery where he is now uh, buried. Um, I wish I had visited him more often uh, in Sewer. And also I regret in a way that I didn't ask him more questions. So he was always kind of giving advice and he was a very good listener, I think. And I regret that I didn't ask him more about his uh, time in India and also about his relation to the sea. And I wish um, we uh, had um, uh, more um, occasions, opportunities actually to sit together. Um, so um, after you moved to Sua and then with the pandemic actually, uh, it, I had not seen him uh, for a while. So I was deeply shocked when I learned about his um, uh, sudden death, but it is for me very, um, how should I say, it's, it's, you know, it makes a big difference to know, and I want to thank you, Martha, that you have chosen his burial place by the sea in Sewer. First of all, it's a beautiful spot, uh, and it's a spot that resembles him, but also it makes me feel that I can go and pay him a visit. So thank you very much, Martha. Hi, uh, so I was Richard's student, uh, 2008, 9, 10, something like that. Um, and I took a class with him and it was the first time I had met him in the class. And there was a couple of sessions, I think. And then I discovered that he lives very close to my family's house. So one day I was walking to campus and I had his class at 9.30 and he was going there too. And I remember I was on the street and I saw him. I was like, this is weird. I don't wanna, I don't wanna walk with him there. And like, we're, he's on the other side of the road. And so we're just walking. <laughs> we get to the class and we sit down and he says, hello. And I know that he had seen me the entire time walking there. So, and then every Tuesday, Thursday, the same thing would happen. I would say, I'm like a freak following this guy around. <laughs> and I, um, I, one day I just tried to be late and it, he was late too. He was, <laughs> and I turned the corner and he's not on that side of the road. He's on this side of the road and he says, aha. And, <laughs> and then, and we just had to, we, did, we walked and, and, and we broke the ice. So it was a lot of fun. He was, <laughs> 
after that, we, I took many courses with him. Um, I audited courses. I even took a graduate course with some people that are here. Uh, although I wasn't a graduate student, but he, he encouraged me to sit in on the course. And uh, honestly, I think he taught me how to read and to write more than anyone else who, who uh, you know, he always told me, slow down. All the time, like, all the time, just slow down, slow down. Slow down and think about what you're saying. What, what are you writing about? These sorts of things. And, and I really do owe him uh, a lot for teaching me how to write carefully, how to also think about what I want to say, but also for encouraging me. I think he, he was always someone that, um, someone mentioned that he gave good advice. He really did give very good advice. And I hope he never told anyone the things I told him because we, <laughs> <laughs> we, really, we used to have a lot of conversations and, and he was, um, he, he was he was a really good friend in, in that respect, but uh, the the other thing that happened was I, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, uh, anyway, I, I don't want to talk for ages or anything like that because I also didn't know much about his work. I used to always ask him. I looked at his book and I said, "This looks like a tax sheet. What's what's you know? What, there's no anth <laughs> there's no anthropology here." And he said, "It's in the details." And that's that's the thing I remembered. I wanted to say is that. Um, he opened my eyes to the fact that you could be really immersed in a place. Um, and I guess that's what he was trying to do with his book. He was using all the statistical data to see pre-colonial India and how it became the, you know, the colonial uh, entity that it was. But I'd never seen anyone do that with so many numbers. Uh, and I remember I even looked at a, a review of his book it was like written in 1988, or 1998, sorry. And the guy wrote this kind of bland review, just seemed like he maybe didn't read the book, but he just sort of like bland review. And then at the end he said some criticisms. The book is so full of detail that maybe most people, you know, it's not gonna be a bestseller, fine. Then the next thing he said was that he didn't really link it to any debates that are current, you know, in the field. And I remember reading it then, and I read it again this morning, because I wanted to just remember some, some of the things I knew about him. And it never seemed to me like he wanted to be current, you know? He really was very good at being where he was. Uh, and I used to like to see him on campus. I used to like to see him on Bliss Street. Eventually, I started liking to see him on, <laughs> on Bliss Street. I used to like to see him, you know, just being the calm, slow-talking, careful-thinking guy that he was. He also wrote a letter for, you know, I wanted to go to graduate school. Um, he wrote me a letter that honestly, uh, I, I, I sometimes still look at that letter. I still have it. I'm not supposed to have a copy of the letter. I had one. Uh, <laughs> I still sometimes look at it because honestly, he saw something um, in me that I didn't really believe in. But I think with time, you know, he... Uh, he taught me even after that. I haven't seen him since 2011, something. So it's been quite some time. So it was really, really miserable when I heard. I was shocked, actually. I couldn't believe it. Like, oh, that's just the craziest story I've ever heard. So it was, anyway, I'm glad that we've done this and uh, glad to make you remember a good thing about him, at least. And uh, thank you. I'm not so good with the <laughs> public speaking and the words like Mohanad. So, um, Mohanad and I were actually in the same class with, where'd you go? Richard, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> since you all know him, and I, I will allow myself to be a bit nervous. Um, I only took one class with Richard. Um, so, uh, how much I knew him was way beyond that uh, particular class. Um, I would say more, more privately as a mentor. Um, and I actually think most people, most of my colleagues at the time or classmates at the time probably had no idea that, um, that I was close to him beyond that um, one class that I took. Uh, and that he was someone that I visited often. So, you know, it's, uh, everyone's saying the same thing, <laughs> that he was, and uh, he listened as someone you could confide in, that you could trust in. Um, and for me, uh, personally, someone I just, it gave me happiness to see. Um, and it, someone I 
want to see often on campus. Um, so it was a very small class I first took with him, anthropological theory. Uh, as a grad student, Mohanad and Sarah, I don't know if she, yeah, were in the class together and one more person. And I think it was one of the most foundational courses that I, and enriching courses that, um, that I took. Um, uh, it, it was different than any other class I had been to. My background was also not anthropology. So it was uh, really the first kind of uh, theoretical course I took. Which, come to think of it, I don't know how I made it into the grad program without a strong theoretic. But anyways, <laughs> here I am now. Um, uh, so it was different, and it's, uh, it's where I was really introduced to the discipline really well, and also really introduced into Richard, really outside of the classroom. Um, it just, he opened me up, and the way he taught, the details, um, completely different approach to learning just opened me up to a whole different way of learning, but also understanding things and th thinking, how to think, how to read the details. He made us go through the, uh, the old, old uh, journals of the, the Royal Anthropological Institute. He made, yes, and it didn't make sense to me at first, but... Um, but so even though that was the only course I took, some, somehow uh, it, we, I kept in touch. I was on campus, I was a student, I kept working here, I've been here forever. Um, so for whatever reason, I kept, I kept seeing him very often. Um, and I can't say exactly why, but he became uh, probably the only person or uh, two people <laughs> that I, I really trusted and that I went, uh, I went to... Uh, I went to regularly, uh, um, you know, I would see him after uh, my work or in between my breaks or um, uh, to, to, for all sorts of advice, again, <laughs> uh, opinions, direction, and in all kinds of matters that uh, had to do with so many things, uh, student activism, uh, issues with the administration, uh, grad school, uh, you name it. And at the time, I was a really active student on campus as well, uh, politically active. And even when I started work, I was. And, um, uh, and there was like a, so much value in, in seeing him and getting direction from him. Um, I, I trusted him a lot. And uh, uh, his words meant a lot, but oftentimes his silence also uh, meant, uh, meant a lot as well. Um, um, he was a lot of support to a lot of people. Everyone has said the exact same thing, that he was so supportive and um, he was very patient, very kind, incredibly generous um, with his time and with his support um, and with his guidance. He also guided me through grad school applications, um, calming a lot of panicked moments. <laughs> Um, and so, and through that, really, he taught me directly and indirectly this value of patience, of critical observation, uh, and also confidence, uh, you know, to have some sort of, a bit of confidence when I was navigating, especially teaching for the first time. Um, so don't quote me on this, but I have this distinct memory of being very nervous as a first-time teacher, and I'm, I'm not sure what to do, and I, it, I'm pretty sure. He said, like, sometimes you just have to wing it, like, and just <laughs> go, go with the flow. And it's something that's still in my mind till the, uh, for now. Um, and so his humor is also mentioned a lot, um, something that I really cherished. Uh, I really, I don't think uh, that there is anyone in AUB that I, I, I enjoyed spending so much time with. Uh, nor did I uh, spend <laughs> that much time with anyone uh, in, in AUB. Um, so, it, you know, it, it uh, made me happy. This is a bit centered around our, our experiences and our memories of him. Um, uh, it was fun. I, I couldn't think of a better word, but it was, it was fun. Um, something I really enjoyed. It was. Um, I always looked forward to it. It always made me happier. It always made me uh, feel better, more hopeful. I, I, uh, I can't really explain it. And I, I, I hope he enjoyed partially, at least, <laughs> these interactions as much as I did. Uh, I would love to say that this kind of continued, but you know, life kind of gets in the way. Um, I had a child, there was a pandemic, so on and so forth. And the last time I saw Richard, I was actually really heavily pregnant and uh, I saw him on campus and I, I just uh, 
I ran to him and I hugged him, which I was surprised that I did at the time, but I did. <laughs> and I, I'm glad I did. Um, I knew how he was doing because of a mutual friend that we had, so I, I always knew, you know, how he was doing. Uh, but I did, I was shocked like everyone else, and I felt a deep loss um, because we tend to take for granted that, that people will be around. Um, actually, I, I was planning with this mutual friend we were talking about, uh, visiting him on, his next, on her next trip here. Um, but I am really happy to be at least being able to share this with um, people who knew him, uh, people who cared about him, people who loved him. Um, and just really grateful for the impact uh, that he had uh, on so many people, but uh, especially on my life. So thank you. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for your words and uh, for being here. Um, I think we're going to show a short two-minute selection from a video that was um, that is a result of a project put together by Alba Colomo and Nathaniel Mann, which documents the fieldwork of Jonathan Ambachi and Richard Somers Smith. Ambachi and Smith traveled to the Amazon in 1965 and conducted field recordings of the indigenous Choco people. And the clip is of Fausto, a community leader of the Choco in 2014, speaking about and reflecting on the pictures and recordings uh, that Richard and his friend had put together. And I have to say, I watched the whole thing. I think it would be nice for people to watch the whole thing. And it's really intriguing that Richard recorded a storm. <laughs> And you can hear the, his fellow traveler telling him, why are we doing this? And you know, he's, it's just the sound of the storm, is something that I think is, 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 you know, is quite interesting in this clip. Thomas, do you want to say something? I mean, oh, Thomas say, has organized I'm gonna, all this. So I'm he, put the clip up, yeah. and if you guys want the video, I can send, send it along yeah. um, afterwards. So that way everyone can see the whole thing. But this is a two minute clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know how to do that. Oh. oh, that's the volume. That's the no, that's the volume. So can you turn that one back up, though? That's the volume. <laughs> Yo haría un museo con esa foto en mi casa. <risa> Siento de que ah, sí está muy bonito y bueno, es tan bonito. <risa> Todo esto es tan que pues, se puede hacer miles de cosas. Eh, eh, siento de que esto puede servir para ayudar a reconstruir una, un pueblo. Eh, es decir, desde que esto, esto como es que es el quiénes somos. Mm y como es que pensar quiénes somos, qué, qué hacemos ahora y como es que si esto, como que hacer un paréntesis si, si sirve frente a la realidad que hemos vivido como es que, será que yo quiero vivir así o siento de que la realidad ahorita en el momento es, es mucho mejor con unas condiciones, vivir así pero con unas condiciones mejoradas o avanzar y perder el espacio que teníamos anteriormente. Siento de que esto sí, como que como construir, como de por el de la foto, construir el, el, el pueblo. Miremos esta foto es de, de, con ellos, con los indígenas, y sería chévere como la misma comunidad, si existía, que yo creo que sí existe, mirarla como está y mirar qué se puede mejorar desde, desde este punto, desde aquí. Y como es que si ustedes reconocen a alguien de aquí. Es decir, solo con una persona que se alcance a reconocer a alguien y te diga, está enterrado ahí, eso es un súper trabajo.
All right, uh, thank you everyone. There are snacks and drinks outside. Yes. Please help yourselves. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.